Welcome back, Sock Knitters. This is Jana. So this is step four today of the Knit a Sock With Me step-by-step -step knit along. So today we're going to turn the heel. And that always feels really magical to me. It's just a cool thing to be able to do to kind of mold things when you're knitting. It's fantastic. I always love this part. It doesn't take very long, so it's really kind of instant gratification. And who doesn't like that? Okay. So as always, thank you to the patrons for bringing these videos to you each and every week. Check out what I'm offering over at patreon.com forward slash pearl together and you can see what I'm offering for your small pledge each month. Okay, let's get started with the heel turn. All right, so we've knitted the heel flap as long as you need to for your foot, measuring from the, your ankle bone to the bottom. But now we need to turn the heel. So that all that means is that we're gonna turn the direction of this knitting and start going that way. So in order to do that, we need to do a series of short rows. So the formula generally is to knit across to the center, however many stitches that is for you. So for me, I have 40 stitches here. I would knit to the knit 20, and then there's your halfway point, and you would knit an extra two past that. So I would knit 22 stitches before I begin my decreasing. Now, let me show you on a sock that's already completed how this works. Okay, so you've completed the heel flap. Now we're gonna knit this gray part here, which is just, like I said, a, it's a little trapezoid shape that's gonna allow us to turn, pick up the stitches along the heel flap here and knit this direction. Now, the width, if we turn it over so we can look at the heel, now this is upside down, so pretend your foot's upside down. The width of your heel you can control by how many stitches you leave in the middle here that have not been decreased. So I'm going to give you the straight up regular formula that you can use with any stitch count anytime and know that you can widen this if you have a particularly wide heel or a wide, wide foot you can widen this section here that has that's just plain knitting slip stitch and that has not been decreased. You can tell these stitches have been decreased because they're all leaning to the right and these are all leaning to the left. So to control the width of the heel, you would just leave more stitches in the center. You'll That'll become clear here in a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the straight up regular method where you're just gonna knit to the middle plus two. So for me, that's 20 to the middle plus two more, so I'm gonna knit a total of 22. If you've cast on, say, 64, and you have 32 stitches across here, then you're gonna get knit to, eight, to uh, 16 plus two would be 18, okay? And I'll put some notes in the video description down below that have the generic formula that you can plug in your own numbers to. Okay, so again, in keeping with what I have going on here, I'm gonna slip the first stitch purl-wise, and then I'm just gonna knit, slip, knit, slip across to the middle, just like we have been. Now, you don't have to maintain the slip stitch reinforcement along the bottom, but I do because on the bottom of my heel is where I often have a wear point you know that's that's a point of wearing out for me so I want that extra durability on the very bottom of my heel so I'm going to show you uh, I choose to do that if you don't want to starting now you can just knit straight across and omit the slip stitch reinforcement okay I've done slip one knit one slip one knit one all the way across 22 stitches here now I'm going to begin decreasing so that I can create a curve so what I'm gonna do first, since I want this to lean to the left, you want it to lean to the outside, I'm going to slip, slip, knit. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then go through the bottom and knit into the back loop of those. Okay, then I'm gonna knit one and turn my work. So by turning my work, that's just the definition of a short row, I'm not knitting all the way across. So it's a short row because I'm not completing this. So now I'm gonna turn my work. I'm gonna slip the first stitch as if to purl. Okay, then I'm gonna purl five. Three, four, five. If you were to choose to knit a little further past the halfway point, if you knitted like four past the halfway, that's fine, you can totally do that. But now you can see a little gap right here where we turned our work. Regardless of how many stitches you knit across past the center, you the goal here is to have the same number of stitches remaining on the left side of that gap 
as you do on the right side. So what I did was I knitted two past, and then I purl, slipped one, purled five. Now I'm going to purl two together. Now I know what I just said is confusing, but bear with me just a second. So I purled five, now I'm going to purl two together, and purl one. So now I've decreased on the other side. Now when I turn my work, I'm going to have a gap right here. So I want this number of stitches remaining on the right to be the same as the number of stitches I have on the left side of the gap over here. So that's how you control the center portion of how wide that heel is. So if you knitted past the center, like four stitches past the center, and then did your slip, slip, knit, slip one, and then turned your work, you just want to make sure that you're purling. If you're not going to purl the five back, purl enough so that when you do the purl two together, purl one, that's three stitches worked, then you'll have the gap, and then you'll see how many you have left. So that's easy enough to work out, but keep in mind that you want these number of stitches on this side of the gap to be equal to the stitches on this side of the gap. If you don't want to mess with all that, just do the regular numbers that I'm putting in the description down below, and follow along with me, which would be two past the center, slip, slip, knit, knit one, and then purl, slip one, purl, purl back across, purl two together, purl one. Turn your work. Okay, not to worry. If you didn't get all that or write it down, that's totally fine. It'll be in the video description, the written directions. So now we're going to keep doing that. And what will happen on the second row here, or the third row actually, is you're going to slip one as if to purl, and you're just going to knit until you get to one stitch before the gap. Now slip one, purl one, you can tell that this is a raised ridge right here. Now this is where we're doing our slip stitches. You can clearly see that that is a raised column, right? That's how you know which ones you're going to purl, and or sorry, which ones you're going to slip and which ones you're going to knit, because you want to be in keeping with the previous pattern. Okay, so now I am one stitch before the gap. I'm going to slip, slip, knit, you're going to do a left-leaning decrease to close that gap. Slip, slip, knit to close the gap. Knit one. Okay. Now, don't worry if that messes up your slip stitch reinforcement for just a second, but it will pick it back up and it'll be all become clear. Now, you're going to turn your work the other way. And just as before, we're going to slip one and purl back to one stitch before that gap. And then, you guessed it, we're going to purl two together to close the gap. And that's why I like this method of doing the short rows, because there's no wraps and turns, and there's no resulting holes. You're just closing the gap that was caused by turning your work. So, purl these two together, and purl one. Turn your work. And you're going to continue doing this until you have all the stitches used up, until you've moved this gap along and you've closed all the gaps till you get to the very end. So slip one. Sometimes in order to carry on with the slip stitch reinforcement, you have to back up a little bit so that you can see that is a slip column. Okay, so if that's a slip stitch, that'll be a knit, that'll be a slip. Well, we just slipped this one. I'm not sure I want to slip two in a row, so that's all right. I'll knit two in a row, and it'll be fine. So knit that one, knit that one, then carry on with your slip, knit, slip, knit. Because I'm choosing to have two knits in a row instead of two slips in a row. You do what works best for you. All right, now I'm here again. I'm going to close the gap by knit, slip one, knit wise. Slip one, knit wise, go in underneath and knit into the back loop, and knit one. Okay, turn your work, slip one, and purl your way back. All right, you get the idea. You're going to carry on with that until we use up all these and we don't have any remaining stitches on the edges of the gap. One thing I'm going to point out is as you're going across and you use up all those stitches to the right and left of the gap, like here, for example, I've done my slip, slip, knit, decrease, and knit one, and I only have one stitch left over here. That's totally okay. That will happen depending on the number that you've cast on and the number of stitches you have when you first start your heel flap. Just don't drop it like I just did. Okay, so that's going to be the same on the other side as I purl across. I'm probably just going to have that one stitch left as well. 
So yep, that's exactly what happened. I've done my purl two together and purl one. I have just one single stitch left, but that's okay. Just don't lose it off your needle and turn your work and carry on just like you have been. And what will happen is you're just going to take care of that at the, at the end when you get over here. You're going to have the gap where you're going to knit two together and then you'll just knit that last one and it'll all work out. All right, I've done my slip one, knit one all the way across, knit two together, or sorry, slip, slip, knit. And now this last lone stitch, I'm gonna knit that through the back loop just like we have been since it's on the edge. And I'm gonna turn my work, slip the first one as if to purl, and purl my way back across. And everything's gonna end up working out evenly. I have finished purling my way back. So now I'm gonna turn my work and show you what we've got. So we've made this nifty little cup for our heel. So isn't that like magical? How that works and we've carried on the slip stitch here so that's awesome okay so our next step for the next video I want to set up for when we're going to pick up the gussets when we do that we're going to pick up the gussets going down this left side first so where I'm gonna leave you with this particular segment is we're gonna go back across all I want you to do is knit the slip stitch pattern slip stitch reinforcement in pattern back across to this side so go ahead and just keep in pattern with your slip stitch going back across. And if you're unsure what to begin with, you can you can see the raised ridges. So find the first one you can tell what's what, like here. That's a slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. But I start with a slip stitch, so I'm going to have two knits together. And so just make that work. It's okay if you have two knits together until you can get where you need to go. But go ahead and slip the first stitch as usual, purl wise. And then if you need to knit two in a row, that's not a big deal. And then go slip one, knit one all the way across and be sure to go ahead and knit through the back loop of the last stitch. And mine's gonna end up where I'm gonna end up knitting the last two because I just have an odd number of stitches and that's totally fine. Okay, so this is where we're gonna leave it until we come back together and we go starting, and I'll show you how I pick up these chain stitches along the edge. I hope you found that helpful and you can see how we can carry on the slip stitch reinforcement through the bottom of the heel. I'm also going to carry it on a little bit further and I'll show you that next time. Join me on Sunday for the next video where I will show you how I'm going to pick up the gusset stitches and place some stitch markers to carry on with the slip stitch reinforcement through the bottom of my heel, which makes a really nice cushy comfortable heel. I'd love to see your socks in progress in the Facebook and Ravelry groups. Tag me on Instagram and thanks for watching.